The idea of this video is to provide visitors to Vancouver, or locals who are just starting out riding the North Shore, a comprehensive list of Black Diamond expert level trails to ride. I've provided enough trails to cover an entire week vacation in Vancouver. This list is quite ambitious and will include a significant amount of climbing, so you may not be able to ride all these trails within a week. However, there are a few trails you can shuttle with a second car if you like. These seven days of riding include 24 trails in all, and I will offer you brief highlights of each trail to allow you to decide which of these trails you want to attempt yourself. You can share this video with your riding group to choose which trails to ride. I highly recommend all these trails. They are what I would call the cream of the crop of the Black Diamond Trails in Vancouver's North Shore. I hope you enjoy. For day one, we will ride the sequence on Mount Seymour that includes CBC, Corkscrew, Pingu, Pangor, and Boogie Nights. These trails can be shuttled by parking one car in the lower parking lot on Anne McDonald Way and driving your second vehicle to the parking lot up Mount Seymour at the switchback just uphill from the entrance to CBC. But if you prefer to earn your elevation, you can also climb up the Old Buck Trail and then the last segment on the Seymour Highway to the top of CBC. CBC has some fresh work done to the previously rotting wooden structures and some new improvements to a few of the rock rolls. So with this trail, you will jump right into a technically challenging trail. There are abundant sections of rock armoring on the trail and two very long skinny sections including a challenging log ride. Corkscrew and Pingu both offer steep terrain and a few ladder bridges to make the trail interesting. Further down, Pangor is what I call a skill trail, offering a wide variety of features including two log skinnies with low consequences to practice your balance on. And a steep rock roll with a skinny ramp to the top. On boogie nights, we'll finish the day with a rip down a Burmy flow trail with lots of opportunities to get significant air. For day two, we will again ride Mount Seymour, but we'll do the climb up the old buck trail to the top of Severed D and ride that steep, shooty descent. Along the way, there are some more optional skinnies to ride, including a long log roll that has cedar planking, along which narrows to a scary eight inches just before the lateral right turn exit. At the bottom of Severed, we'll climb back up the Penny Lane, Goodsir Martin, climb trails to the top of Dales. Dales is a North Shore old school classic, with lots of roots and rocks to contend with, but some exhilarating steep, slabby, and armored segments.
our ride then transitions into a more cross country trail on forever after with a number of punchy climbs to regain elevation this trail is a little more flowy than dale's but still offers some steep gnarly descent segments with a finish along a sequence of wooden ladder bridges For day 3, we will ride the Mount Fromm region by climbing up the gravel road to the top of Crankham Crankham. Crankham has numerous steep rock armored berms and finishes with a sequence of steep skinny ladder bridges that will challenge your braking ability and a finish with a narrow zigzag along a log roll. Kirkford is quite different with a double sequence of sharp burmy switchbacks that will remind riders of skiers who make figure eight turns in deep powder. The trail ends with a lateral jump exit from a log roll. We will then climb back up the gravel road to the top of Floppy Bunny, which begins with a double sequence of steep wooden bridge rolls, then transitions into a couple of quick back-to-back -back jumps and some more wooden structures further down. We'll then do a third climb back up the road to the top of Pipeline, which might have the newly refurbished wooden ladder bridge as a highlight structure so far. There it is. I'm on it. Very, very cool. Pipeline might be the most technically challenging of the trails so far, with lots of old school roots, rocks, and steep rolls to keep you on your toes. There was a... Yeah. It's the teeter-totter. Oh yeah, it's virtually the same as it used to be. Oh yeah, right on, freaking on. For day four, we will again ride Mount Fromm with a climb up the no quarter sequence of climb trails that starts on Braemar Road and climb to the top of Seventh Secret. Seventh offers numerous steep rock armored berms. A couple of long sequences of skinnies. And a couple of features I have yet to ride a very steep rock roll called the Gangler and a long raised log ride that has significant consequences of falling. At the bottom of 7th we'll cross over the road and ride down Expresso, Lower Expresso and Lower Digger. This sequence of trails is likely to be the most glowy expert trails we will encounter. Expresso is probably the most popular and rideable expert trail in North Vancouver.
It also offers a couple of steep optional rock rolls with wooden ramp entrances and another dozen interesting wooden features throughout the trail. Espresso gets even more high speed flowy in Burma. we will ride Mount Fromm again. There are just so many great black trails in this region. We'll again climb up the No Quarter Climb from Braemar Road and ride down the Lower Oil Can and Lower Crippler Trails. Lower Oil Can is a generally flowy trail with a couple of ramp jumps, but it also offers sections of steep rock armored descents. Lower Crippler is one of the hardest trails in this list. It has three or four challenging wooden skinnies. Including a long roller coaster with a very skinny entry and a bermed exit. It also has a couple of steep rock slabs. By now, you should know whether this trail is suitable for you. For day six, we will move over to the Cypress Mountain region and park at the lookout at the bottom of Mystery Downhill and climb up the road to the top. As an alternative, and especially if you're now getting leg weary, we can park a vehicle at this parking lot and shuttle a second car up to the gravel road at the top of Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore is a very steep shooting trail with a number of eroded sections that will require you to huck down the drop so be on your toes. If we take the connector trail between Jersey Shore and Mystery Downhill, we will be treated with a brief section of steep urban flow before again transitioning back into the classic North Shore steep janky shoots. We will then climb back up for a second lap down Meat Sweats, which is a more natural, loamy trail that shouldn't be ridden if it's wet due to the damage that the trail will suffer. For day 7, we will finish the trip with a second day on Cypress Mountain, again with the option to shuttle a second vehicle further up the highway and begin our descent down the Antagonizer Trail. Antagonizer is barely a trail. It almost feels like a bushwhack on a bike, but if you like steep, then even more steep shoots, you'll like this trail. At the bottom, we will divert over to Slippery Canoe to access the Upper Tall Cans and Wu Tang trails below. Again, these trails are not as highly ridden as those of Mount Fromm, but if you like janky trails with naturally occurring challenging features, then this is for you. However, you might want to avoid this area if it's wet. You will need confidence braking on these slippery surfaces. Okay, I'm now on Wu-Tang, and the description says that there's uh, a number of jumps and drops. 
with optional roll around. So I gotta be on my toes. Overall, if you encounter wet weather, which is likely in Vancouver most of the year, then it's probably best to avoid the wooden features and stick to the armored trails on Mount Fromm, such as Seventh Secret, Crinkum Crinkum, and Espresso, or Pangor, Dales, and Forever After on Mount Seymour. Well, that does it for now. I hope these trails have excited you to mountain bike in Vancouver. The options for double black diamond trails in Vancouver will be covered in a future video. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.